other is David Bates. Um, I'm going to say C, internetdomain.tv. Got it for 16000 Whoa, good going. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to Thursday Night at Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. You know, it's no secret that our $100 questions are easy. The kids just love them. But sometimes they're so easy, they're hard. Remember Brian Fedora? He's the guy who thought that little Jack Horner put his thumb in a pie and pulled out a blackbird. <laughs> Goodbye. Anyway, yesterday was one of those days for David Bates. The question was, an especially memorable day is often said to be, what kind of letter day? And the question gave you fits, didn't it? I think it was the whole thing. I was so shocked to be up here in the first place. But then place. finally I you just, got it. Read yeah, the letter. I, just, I read each, each answer with the question. But it's kind of I, scary, isn't it? Very. Yeah. Very. You did fine, though. You're going for $32,000. And your mom is, is back with you tonight. Uh, Linda, nice to see you, Linda. Thank you. Good you to be back. You and your mom go out last night in New York City? We no, I wanted uh, to paint the town red, but he, he, it was his call. So what did you do? We uh, went to ESPN Zone and watched the Yankees ESPN game. had a beer and watched the game. Exactly. Great. Two beers. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. And now we talked yesterday just briefly about your search for the right girl. Yep. Yeah. I have a little more detail on that now. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, you, low maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, she, she had to have a direction in life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, what is your direction? Uh, OK. Uh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> No mooches. You didn't want any mooches at all. Nope. And she had to have a good sense of humor. Yeah. And honest. And the last one is really interesting. And, and this is from himself. They can't be evil. <laughs> <laughs> you met a few evil ones, huh? Yeah, they ended up being evil after oh, I dated them a gosh. couple months. It's not good, David. Well, all right, David. Good luck to you. You Thank won $16,000, and now you're just six questions away from winning $1 million. Once you reach the $32,000 level, you're guaranteed to leave here with at least that much money. You have just one lifeline left, my friend. That's the phone a friend. If you want to play along with David, go to ABC.com and join the thousands of others using ABC's Enhanced TV. Okay, David, ready to go? Yep. Ready, audience? Yeah, we're all set here. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Very important question, $32,000. You gotta make this level, okay? If you miss this, you'll go back to 1,000. Here it is. An object with spikes or holes placed in the bottom of a vase to support a floral arrangement is called what? A rabbit, a frog, a porcupine, a ladybug. Many, I don't know how many times you said flowers in a vase, but that thing at the bottom of it, you know? Yeah. I've sent a few, but I never see the flowers that I sent. Uh, I think I'm going to use a flower friend, but i got to think of who might know this. Well, I've got a probably a lady friend. might know it more than a man. Got one female lifeline out there. And I think I'm gonna call her. What's her name? Crystal. What does she do? She's my uh, best friend's wife. She's getting a PhD um, in pharmacology. Sounds like a lot to me. We'll get Crystal <laughs> on the line right now. Thank you, ATT. Hello? Crystal? Regis Philbin here from ABC's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. How are you? I'm fine. Is David behaving himself? Well, we're <laughs> sitting around here and he's whining about his love life. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. Well, he says it is, and if you were any kind of a friend, you'd fix that for him. <laughs> I'm fine. But before you do that, something else needs to be fixed, all right? He's got a question for you and four possible answers which he'll give you. And one of them's the right answer, of course. David, it's all yours. You've got 30 seconds. Good luck, Crystal. Here you go, David. An object with spikes or holes placed in the bottom of a vase to support a floral arrangement is called what? A rabbit, a frog, a porcupine, or a ladybug? 
something in a vase that holds Rabbit, flowers. Rabbit, frog, porcupine. Or ladybug. Ladybug. Can you eliminate, eliminate any of them? Okay, I'm looking. Any guess? Five seconds. Uh, uh, let's go with um, porcupine. Can always take the 16,000. Yes. That was my initial educated guess, but at times it seems too obvious. <sighs> I talked to my brother last night and he said, don't be stupid. 16,000 is a lot of money, but I'm thinking about being stupid right now. Why do you want to be stupid? <sighs> I don't know. You want to take a try at it, don't you? I want to. <sighs> I think I'm going to go for it, but not say Porky Planet. I'm going to say something else. David, it's a frog. It's a frog. Was it a porcupine? Was it a lady's bug? Or a frog? <laughs> David, David, David. Where do you get a thousand bucks, okay? Go ahead. Come on now. Too bad, huh? Yeah, I'll bet there were all kinds of florists out there yelling at their TV sets. That thing is called a frog, but couldn't get it. But right now, it's time to meet 10 people who want to be almost famous. And they are Mark McCallum, Colorado Springs, Colorado, Tony Frausto, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Alec McKenzie, San Francisco, California, Stan Phillips, Wine and Skill, New York, Michael Smith, Jacksonville, Florida, Dave Polters, Warsaw, Wisconsin, Bob Nichols, Seattle, Washington, Joel Foss, Marysville, Washington, Mike Fairbury, Olympia, Washington, Donna Newton, Smyrna, Tennessee. Okay, everybody, glad to have you here. So you're ready, you're set. Here it comes, tonight's first fastest finger question. With these U.S. Atlantic coast cities in geographical order, starting in the north. New Haven, Chesapeake, Annapolis, Savannah. Okay, time's up. Let's see that answer in the correct order, starting in the north. And it's New Haven, Annapolis, Chesapeake, finally in the south, Savannah. That's the right order. Who got it at the fastest time? The winner is Joel Foss. When we come back. <laughs> Joel Foss is with us right now. He's from Marysville, Washington, which is just outside of Seattle, Washington. As a matter of fact, as I recall, I'm reading off uh, the hometowns of everybody. There were three people from Washington. We had three of us. And when did you uh, meet? We met on the airplane on the way out here. No kidding? Yeah. Didn't know that uh, anyone else was connected to the show? No idea. Thought how did were... you hear about that? Uh, we heard the stewardesses talking to the uh, guys in front of us, and they said they were on the show. We started talking with them, and then a guy from two seats behind came up and said, hey, I'm going on the show, too. <laughs> then the pilot said, I'll be there, too. <laughs> Everybody wanted to be on the show. Well, that's great, Joe. So uh, you're here from Marysville. You're a contractor, that's home correct. builder. Yeah. Married uh, nine years to uh, Carrie. Nice to see you, Carrie. As a matter of fact, when you met Carrie, uh, you lived next door to her in an apartment house, right? I did. I moved in across the hall from her. Across the hall, right. And you noticed that uh, she had two little girls. Yeah. 
And she was living alone, single mom. Yep. So how did you make the connection with Carrie? Um, doing a little baking one night, and I needed an egg, so I went next door and asked the neighbor if I could borrow one. Oldest gag in the world. That's what I heard. Did you pick up a little sugar while you were there? Uh, boy, oh boy, Joe. Well, it worked, didn't it? It did. Okay. All right, so you hear, you know the rules. You're 15 questions away from winning $1 million, Joe. Once you reach the $1,000 or the $32,000 level, you're guaranteed to live here with at least that much money. And to help you win, you have three lifelines, 50-50, ask the audience, and you can phone a friend. So if you're ready, Joe Foss, let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? $100. Someone who starts up a conversation at a party is said to be breaking the what? Ice, clouds, waves, host favorite vase. That would be A. Regis Ice. Ice, the right answer. Sure, you got it. $200. What is the term for a barbed spear used to hunt whales? Lampoon, brigadoon, harpoon, pontoon. I'll go with C, harpoon. That's what they use, a harpoon to hunt those whales. $300. Which of these refers to an inexpensive place of lodging? A hostel, a surly, an annoy, a dower. I'll take a hostel. Hostel, the right answer. And that's what they call an inexpensive place of lodging. Comes for $500. According to the Old Testament, Eve was created from what part of Adam? His heart, rib, hip, brain. I'll take B, rib. Yes, Adam's rib. That's what God used. He's up to $1,000 right now. What is the original flavor of Bosco syrup? Caramel, strawberry, chocolate, peanut butter. I'm gonna go with C, chocolate. Right, it's chocolate. Okay, nicely done here. Still have all your lifelines. Here it is for $2,000. How high from the floor is a regulation professional basketball hoop? Eight feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, 13 feet. That's B, 10 feet. Final answer. Yeah. Yes, 10 feet. He's up to $4,000. What animal is the symbol for the World Wildlife Fund? A tiger, panda, eagle. Elephant. Regis, I'm gonna go with B, Panda. Pretty sure? Yeah, I'm pretty confident. Final answer? Final answer, Regis. Got it for 4,000. <laughs> Eight away now from the million. Here it is for $8,000. By definition, a lexicographer writes what? Travelogues, horoscopes, cookbooks, dictionaries. I'm gonna go with D, dictionaries. Final answer? Yeah, final answer. Yes, that's what they write, dictionaries. Got it. <laughs> Doing just great here, $16,000 coming up. The 2000 movie, American Psycho, is based on the novel of the same name by what writer? Philip Roth, Joe Esterhaus, Brett Easton Ellis, Don DeLillo. I'd like to uh, use a lifeline on this, Regis. Ask the audience. Want to ask the audience? We can do that. Joe needs your help, audience. If you're ready, on your keypads. Using A, B, C, or D, please vote now. Well, 46% feel it's uh, Brett Easton Ellis, and uh, Joe Esterhaus came in uh, second at 23%, Philip Roth at 19%. I 
vibe doesn't go along with my first instinct on it. You can always do 50-50 and see how your instinct stacks up with the audience's uh, choice. Or you can phone somebody. Yeah, I'd hate to waste that 50-50 by... <clears throat> if that was one of the ones left. Who'd you think it was? I thought it was Joe Esterhaus. That was my first inclination. Where am I at, Regis? 16? You're going for 16,000 right now, yeah. I'm going to phone a friend. Sure, who do you want to call? I'd like to call Michael. And what does Michael do? Michael is an author and a uh, film critic and uh, radio talk show host. Oh, sounds like the right guy to me. I think so. We'll get him on the line, AT&T. Hello? Hello? Hello, Philip. No, this is Michael. It's Michael. It's Michael. We want Michael. We want Michael. Why am I calling Philip? I don't know. <laughs> Michael, how are you? I'm very well. This is Regis. Hello, Regis. From New York City. How you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm uh, in the midst of hosting a, a live radio show, but uh, that's what I do. Are you really? Well, say hello to everybody for us. Anyway, I'm here with Joel, and we need your help, okay? Great. He's got the, uh, the question, the four answers. One of them's the right answer. Joel, you got 30 seconds, and they start now. Michael, the 2000 movie American Psycho is based on the novel of the same name by what writer? Brett Easton Ellis. Thank you very much. You, you agree with the audience on that? Yeah, it is Brett right East Nail. He wrote I, that novel. I should have trusted him. Thanks, Michael. You're welcome. Hey, good going, Joel. Okay. Hope see, you make a million. See you, Michael. See you later, Regis. And say hello to Philip as soon as you can. <laughs> I sure will. <laughs> so, where are we? We are going with C, Brett Easton Ellis. We're going to make that our final answer. And he's right for $16,000. We're going to take a break. When we come back, he goes for $32,000. Joel Foss from Marysville, Washington, has burned up two lifelines, but he's still in the game. He's won 16,000. He's going for 32,000. Six away from the million. Let's play. <laughs> the infamous Chernobyl power plant is located in what former Soviet Union republic? Ukraine, Georgia, Belarus, Lithuania. Well, that's a tough one, Regis. I think I can eliminate Georgia and uh, Belarus. I think they are southern republics. Well, to get to 32, I will go ahead and use my 50-50, Regis. Why do we do that? Why do we take away two of those wrong answers, computer? Just like David, who preceded you, I should remind you, you can take the 16,000 right now, Trey. Regis, I'm going to go with A, Ukraine. Okay. Final answer. Just won $32,000. Well, we made it to the $32,000 level. You can't leave you with less than that. Five away from the million. Here it comes for $64,000. Al Gore was the basis for the main male character in which of these best-selling novels? A Separate Piece, Primary Colors, The Secret History, Love Story. Well, it doesn't say in his own mind, so... I'm gonna go with B, Primary Colors. See the book? See the movie? Read the book? No. Taking a guess? Taking a guess at it. Still gonna have that 32 even if you get it wrong. Want to make it your final answer? What do you want to change? 
Now I'll go with it. Final answer. Final answer. No, believe it or not, it was Love Story. The primary male character in Love Story. All right. $32,000, Joel, and thank you very much. Good luck. Yes, it's true, it's true. Eric Siegel, who wrote Love Story, was a classmate of Al Gore at Harvard and based the character Oliver on him. And now we have an empty hot seat, so here's the next fastest finger question. Put these movie sequels in order of their theatrical debut, starting with the most recent. Home Alone 3, Gremlins 2, Beethoven 2nd, Toy Story 2. Okay, we're already here. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the most recent. Toy Story 2, and then Home Alone 3, Beethoven 2nd, and Gremlins 2. That's the right order. Who got it in the fastest time? Let's see. Yes, Tony Fausto. Hello, Tony. Good for you. Gonna go for a million dollars, okay? We'll be right back with Tony. Stay with us. He's from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Name is Tony Frausto. He's a single guy and uh, 31 years old and a high school teacher. Yes. Nice to have you here, Tony. Congratulations. You brought along your sister as your, your companion. Nice to see you, sister. Sister's name is Patricia. Yeah. Hi, Older sister, younger sister? Older. You were sent here on a mission by the family, weren't you? <laughs> Keep him in line if he wins any money. That's right, sure, because <laughs> Tony could blow it all here in New York. That's right. Anyway, Tony, we're glad you're here. A lot of your friends thought you'd never make it here, right? That's right. You showed them. You're here and you're going now. You know about the rules. You know about the lifelines, 50-50. Ask the audience, phone a friend. So if you're ready, Tony, let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? We're going to start at that $100 question. What phrase describes the members of a group as distinguished from its leaders? Ins and outs, rank and file, hare and hounds, hue and cry. That would be B, rank and file. Rank and file it is. $200. Which of the following is an adjective often used to describe the world of spies? Cloak and horse, cloak and lantern, cloak and dagger, cloak and ladder. Okay. That would be C, cloak and dagger. Cloak and dagger, sure, that's what they call it. World of Spies. He's going for $300. By definition, a tomcat is what kind of cat? Striped, male, female, tidy. That would be B, male. Yes, the male cat is the top cat. Okay, Tony, here it is for $500. A tiller is normally used to steer which of the following? Shopping cart, motorcycle, career, boat. That would be the boat. Yes, a tiller and a boat, go together. For $1,000. What sport has a hold called a half Nelson? Wrestling, boxing, fencing, football. That would be A, wrestling. Half Nelson and wrestling, that's the one. Tony's going for $2,000 right now. Which of the following foreign terms is not a common way to say goodbye? Arrivederci. Aloha. Apropos. Auf Wiedersehen. That would be C. Apropos. Final answer? Yes. That's not the way to say goodbye. You're right. One, two thousand. $4,000 coming up. In the 1991 movie City Slickers, what do the main characters do on their vacation? A safari, drive cattle, 
round up horses, tour on bikes. That would be B, drive cattle. That's your final answer? Yes. Yes, they drive cattle on their vacation. We're up to $8,000. What does the AC stand for in the abbreviation ACDC? Ampere charge, alpha capacitor, alternating current, active circuit. Ampere charge, alpha capacitor, alternating current, active circuit. I'd like to phone a friend. What do you want to call? Uh, Dan. What is Dan? Dan works for the Wisconsin Electric Power Company. <laughs> Why even call him, right? <laughs> Let's get Dan to the line, AT&T. We need him. Hello. Hello, Dan. Yes. Regis Philbin from ABC who wants to be a millionaire. How you doing? Good. How are you, Regis? Good. I'm, I'm here with Tony. Okay. And we came upon a question that is stumping him, but we think you might know. Okay. All right. He's going for $8,000 right now. I'll give you the question of the four answers. One of them is the right answer. All right, Tony, you got 30 seconds, and they start now. Dan, what does the AC stand for in the abbreviation ACDC? Ampere charge, alpha, capacitator, alternating current, or active circuit? Alternating current, 100% sure. positive. All right, thanks a lot, buddy. Okay. It's your friendly Wisconsin Electrical Company coming through for you. That's right. Alternating um, current, he said. What do you think? I trust him. That'll be uh, C. Final answer. Yes, Dan is right. You got it. Eight thousand dollars. We'll take a break. When we come back, he's seven away from a million and going for sixteen thousand. from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, going for $16,000 in a moment. Where, where do you get most of your knowledge from? Uh, well, I read a lot of books, mm -hmm. a lot of ma different kinds of magazines and books, and usually that's where I get most Been of Been a my trivia life. buff all your life? Yeah, pretty much. You startled your, your friends one time, and you got a nickname out of it, huh? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, we were playing a trivia contest about old Green Bay Packer players, and one of the players, one of the answers, his name was Buckets Goldenberg, which is like a very old player. And I had the answer, and my name sort of, I got the nickname Buckets. So. <laughs> That's what you got out of it, yes. Buckets, yeah. And you're also a big Simpsons fan. Yeah, yeah, I've uh, watched it ever since it started. You claim that you've watched every single episode. Yeah, every well, one. Ten That's, years now, I think yeah. it's been on. That's one of the, uh, the only shows I really watch, other than Millionaire. Thank you very much, <laughs> yeah. Came up with that one at the last second, <laughs> didn't you? All right, Tony, 16,000, two lifelines left. Let's play, here we go. From 1971 to 1979, Idi Amin was the ruler of what country? Uganda, Zimbabwe, Ghana, Sudan. That would be A, Uganda. Final answer? Yes. That's the country he ruled, Uganda. Idi Amin. Up to $32,000. What is the name of the DJ in the hip-hop act, Salt and Pepper? Ladybug, Jazzy Jeff, Grandmaster Flash, Spinderella. That'd be D, Spinderella. Final answer. Yeah. Spinderella, the DJ. Really interesting. You got two lifelines, you're five away from the million, and you're going for $64,000. Which of the following structures is not part of Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C.? U.S. Botanic Gardens, Supreme Court Building, Jefferson Memorial, Library of Congress. I'd like to ask the audience, please. 
Audience, we need a little help here for Tony. If you're ready, on your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, please vote now. The 47% feel it's the Jefferson Memorial. Have you been to Washington, Tony? I was when I was very young. Yeah, okay. Well, 47% feel it's uh, the Jefferson Memorial, and then the Botanic Garden came in the second to 29%. Not part of the Capitol Hill. Not part. I'm still not comfortable with this yet. Um, why don't I try my 50-50? Why don't we do that? Can you take away two of those wrong answers, computer, please? Well, uh, that took out the answer that I thought it was, so obviously I'm going to go with C, Jefferson Memorial. And make it? Make it my final answer. And they're right, it's the Jefferson Memorial. It's the south side of the uh, Tidal uh, Basin in West Potomac Park. $125,000, Tony. And all those guys who said, forget it, you're never going to make it. <laughs> they're watching right now. Here we go, far away from the million. The creator of what comic book series paid $3 million for Mark McGuire's 70th home run ball of the 1998 season? The Crow, Spawn, Sandman, The Tick. It'd be B, Spawn. You sure about this? Final. He said it. Got it right, Frog. <laughs> Todd McFarlane was his name. $250,000. Wise guys who said you would never be here. <laughs> Quarter million dollars, Tony. Ready? Let's here go. it is. According to Greek legend, what creature killed Orion? Scorpion, bull, lion, ram. Well, since I don't have any lifelines left, and I don't know this answer to this question, I'm going to uh, just take my money. Why, well, sure you are. $125,000. If you were to take a guess, what would it be? Uh, it probably would have been B. The bull? No, it's the scorpion. Yeah. But hey, look, $125,000. Tony, <laughs> here you go. All yours. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Well, Tony goes home with $125,000, and his sister Patricia has her work cut out for her, protecting him from spending that money. She's watching him like a hawk. But now it's time for our next fastest finger question, and here it is. Put these TV detective series in order of their first debut, starting with the earliest. Profiler, Charlie's Angels, Remington Steel, Hawaii 5-0. Time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the earliest series. Hawaii 5 0, then Charlie's Angels, Remington Steel, finally Profiler, who got it right in the fastest time. The winner is Alec McKenzie. Alec, how are you? Congratulations. All right, Alec, going for a million dollars when we come back. Alec McKenzie from San Francisco. He's a teacher there, sixth and uh, seventh grade, English and Spanish. That's right. Yeah. Nice to have. You. As a matter of fact, did you hear that you qualified uh, right in the middle of a uh, of a class? Yeah, it came right in the middle of my seventh grade Spanish class, and the class went totally silent. 
And I asked who it was, and I whispered to the class who it was, and pandemonium broke out. Teachers came from other rooms to see what was wrong, and it was an <laughs> incredible reaction. Well, you've been using this method in teaching the kids, right? Yeah, we use Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I use it all the time in my Spanish classes, and it's a great way to get the kids interested. They all watch the show. Oh, that's they great. all know the format. So they're watching you right now. I hope so, and yes. And also watching you is your mom. You brought her along. Hi, Catherine. How you doing? Just great. Nice Thanks. to have you here. Thank you. All right, so are you ready to go? I'm ready. Why don't we do it, all right? You know the rules. You know about the lifeline. So let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with Alex. <laughs> all right, Alex, for $100, which of these animals has flippers? Seal, camel, hamster, pinball wizard. <laughs> I'm going to say A, seal. Final answer? Final answer. Yeah, the seal has the flippers. You're right. Here it is for $200. Professionally speaking, an accountant would be most helpful in which of the following situations? Filing tax returns, mending a broken arm, coaching NBA teams, fleeing the country. <laughs> My dad is an accountant, so he'd really be upset if I got this wrong. It's A, filing a tax return. Final? Final answer. Yes, filing that tax return. 300 bucks. What is it called when an apartment renter rents out his apartment to another person? Retainment, sublet, escrow, chain letter. Uh, I'm going to say B, sublet. Yeah, that's what they do. They sublet that apartment to another person. $500. Here it is. Which of the following is the name of a popular cake traditionally made with pineapple? Topsy-turvy, bottoms up, upside down, up, up, and away. <laughs> I'm going to say C, upside down. Upside down cake, you make it with pineapple. <laughs> He's going for $1,000. Which of the following people would not be considered part of your nuclear family? Your mother, your father, your sister, your cousin. I'm going to say D, your cousin. Your cousin, the right answer. OK, you've won now $1,000. Safely navigated your way through those first five questions. Here it comes for $2,000. What color is the new US dollar coin? Is it silver, gold, copper? Bronze. Uh, I believe that's B, gold. Final answer? Final answer. Yes, the new dollar coin is gold. $2,000, and now we're going for $4,000. A person with blood type O can safely receive a transfusion of what blood type? A, B, AB, O. Uh, let's see. I don't know this one, but I want to stay in, so I'm going to use one of my lifelines. Um, somebody with a medical background? Yeah, I've got a couple of people as lifelines who might be helpful there. I'm trying to think. I think what I'm going to do is ask the audience on this one. Why do we do that? Audience, we need some help for Alec. If you're ready, on your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, vote now. Seventy-seven <laughs> percent think it's O. I'm glad it's such an overwhelming majority because I really had no idea on this one. Um, so I'm going to go with the audience. They looked really smart. I heard them earlier. Uh, I think I'm going to go with D-O as my final answer. Yes, O is the right left side. You won $4,000, Al, and that, time, that sound means that we're out of time for tonight. But Alec will be back here on Sunday night, and joining him will be 10 people who are flying in from the four corners of the country, and they are Eric Kluski, Terry Peraza, Laura Cavallini, Martin Hollick, Jennifer Nijak, Jay Melvin, Michelle Whitfield, Randy Everson, Nancy Miller, 
and Jackie Anderson. Go ahead, take a good look at the entertainer, host, passion plate, and now author, too. I do it all. You think this is easy? You have no idea, Alec. It's hard work being losers. And you can find out just how hard in my new book, Who Wants to Be Me? Available now in bookstores everywhere. Stay with ABC, the season premiere of Primetime Thursday, coming up next. We'll see you with Alec on Sunday night at 9, 8 central. From New York, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>